Hello everyone and welcome to this presentation. We will be talking today about continuous testing in a cloud-based infrastructure using virtualization and real hardware in the loop. Our agenda will be the following. I will start by a first introduction about QA and our QA goals. Then we will see the concept of RTM and how they are already implemented inside the community stack. After that, we'll talk about real RTM implementation and all the challenges that are behind it. Finally, we will talk about test reporting and we'll finish by our roadmap and a short conclusion. Let's start first by a short introduction about myself. I'm Armand Benito. I'm a software and QA engineer at IoT.BizDage. IoT.BizDage is a company located in Brittany, in France. We are near the sea, we are 30 engineers, and our main product is Redpesk, that is composed of a software factory and an operating system. So, why a QA system is needed? There are several points, I just say three of them here. Uh, the code complexity is is increasing in systems and it's increasing increasing really fast. Uh, for example, in 2004, a Boeing 787 was made of uh, 14 million lines of code, when in 2012, an uh, average high-end car uh, is made for is made of 100 million lines of code. The second point is about long-term support. Uh, long-term support is really mandatory for industrial, industrial system. Uh, indeed, the average age of a European car is 12 years old. It's approximately the same uh, in US. And this is why industri industrial system and more specific cars are made to last. Therefore, the code inside this kind of ob objects needs to be made to last as well. <clears throat> and the last point, but not the least, is cyber security. Uh, it's not an option anymore, uh, really. And uh, to give you a little example, in the first six months of 2021, more than 1.5 billion of attacks have been seen on IoT devices. So, because all of that, the, an automatic QA infrastructure is needed. And it's a must have because it tests systematically for every commit the possible failure configuration and then reduce the risk of bug hidden in the complexity of, of, the, of the system. It allows to maintain for 10 to 15 years, uh, this is basically our goal in IoT.based age, um, by checking automatically that no code deviation is injected through the code maintenance. And finally, it enforces security checks early in the dev development cycle. Uh, because of all of that, it keeps costs and time under control. Let's start this presentation by an overview for QA system. Uh, the QA system never comes alone since we are not doing that for entertainment, but in order to enhance the quality of the resulting code. Uh, in our case, the QA is done on binary packages coming out of our build system. Once these packages have passed the QA, they can keep progressing in the factory process. And uh, here is the, the goals for, for QA, the workflow. Uh, at the beginning of the, of the chain, we have the uh, two developers here and the managers. The developers uh, are committing changes on the on the server on the Git server, for example. Uh, once these commit, uh, commits are done, the the build the the source server will initiate a build on the build system. If this build passes, uh, it can move on to the unit test. 
Uh, if you know quite well spec files uh, in the Redpesk uh, factories, the unit tests are actually corresponding to the check section of the spec file. So, once these unit tests are passed, we can move on, move on to the virtual integration tests. Uh, these virtual integration tests are run inside virtual target, of course. And once these virtual integration tests are passed, we can move on the real integration test on real targets. Um, what we can say about this uh, diagram is that the test should be written and run early in the CI CT infrastructure. It is therefore easier to run them on a virtual target. Uh, the test should be run, of course, every time a developer push a commit in the system. And of course, of course, real hardware needs to be integrated to, avia to avoid deviation between virtualization and reality. And as soon as a build or test fails, the developers and the managers are notified in order to shorten the time between the bug being introduced and its fix. And of course, the main output of the QA needs to allow anybody to understand in the blink of an eye what is passing the QA and what is not. Like it's in the case here, we have a little dashboard with statistics and light, latest build, latest test results, etc. etc. So, a QA system needs to contain a continuous test system. At IoT.bzh, in the heart of our continuous testing system, we have the Rackable test modules. The Rackable test modules, uh, they are all solutions to run integration tests within the Redpesk infrastructure. They are intended to meet requirements user requirements regarding qualification, certifications, continuous integration. They can be dynamically started by the infrastructure or by the developer to run integration tests. And they are at the health of the continuous integration and continuous testing inside the Redpesk factory. In this infrastructure, we are having both type of real RTM Virtual and real. Uh, virtual RTM are completely isolated. It is basically a QEMU inside the LXC with, real with really strict IP table rules. Um, on the on the left side of the of the sorry on the left side of the slide, you can see that packages and images are created in the CI infrastructure can be accessed by the RTM in order to test them. And uh, as we can see on the left side of the slide, completely left slide side of the slide, the developer uh, have a direct access to the target through a VPN connection between their PC and the CI infrastructure. A first version of this RTM is already available in our community stack. So basically, it is already available for anybody for free. Uh, let's see how they are working and what is available. In order to make it work, uh, the developer needs to the developers need to integrate few things inside its packaging, and these things correspond to corresponds to the red test definition. Um, one of these things is to have a red test sub package from his main uh, packages. Inside this package, you need to have a run red test script where actually, uh, sorry, this run red test script will be run by the CI infrastructure to run the test. And this test need to output uh, a test anything protocol file and this file will be passed by the infrastructure to get the to get the results of the test uh, test anything protocol is kind is kind of a simple protocol really so in application this give that on the screen you can see that uh, from sources to spec file you build it 
From that, you get at least one main RPM. Here it's called Hello World Binding RPM. And the second one that ends with redtest.rpm. The continuous testing infrastructure take both of these, of these uh, packages, install it on a device and do test, run the test, and from that output the console logs, the tab files, and the uh, ZIP containing all of that. And as we can see in this diagram, virtual RTM are available in our community stack. Uh, they allow us to run application tests through the web UI or through the command line interface RPCLI. RP uh, but for the moment, it's only virtual on our community stack. And now it's time to see what it looks like to run an integration test on our community stack. So let's, let's watch this. So let's go on the community stack. Okay, so this is the main dashboard of community. Uh, we are looking for a test, an application test to run. So we go for Hello World Binding, the famous one. And uh, so we choose a build to test for, and let's start the test. So the tests are running. It is now pending for an available virtual RTM, which is started in the background, in the infrastructure. The tests are being deployed, so basically the queue is starting and we are installing the, the packages. Yeah, so the Hello World Binding is installed, the red test uh, packages is installed, and the tests are passing. This is the end. And we have the resulting tab files concatenated because there were several ones. We have a little synthesis on the left side where you can find the results, the number of tests passed, failed. You can download the files or the results file with the test sniffing protocol results, the console logs, so std out and std error, and all of that. And you can as well directly download the, the test and thing protocol results. So, we have seen the RTM overview and the virtual RTM. And it's now really time to talk about real RTM implementation. And we will see that it's bringing up a few challenges. One of the challenges is to share boards between users. Indeed, most of the time in projects, you do not have one board per user because of prices, because of availability of the board. So the real LTM system really needs to manage the user's access. Another challenge is, to is the, how you supply the boards in power. Uh, indeed, you need to be able to stop and start the board correctly before and after the test. Another challenge is is to manage the Redpesk OS image loading. Indeed, uh, loading a kernel image in what is one thing really, but the kernel is around 10 megabytes and it is easy to load in RAM. But it's not the same really when it's come to a full distribution image bigger than two gigabytes with several partitions. And finally, the last but not the least, you need to manage the board's boot. You need to manage grub, you boot, the prompt, etc., etc. <clears throat> we will now focus our attention on how these challenges will be addressed. In this case, Lava is really the missing link for us uh, to integrate the real RTM systems in our Redpest QA system. Indeed, it solves a few problems for us. Uh, LAVA stands for Linear Automated Validation Architectures. It's a continuous integration system uh, for deploying OS onto physical and virtual hardware for running tests. It, it is used a lot in kernel validation, for example, in kernel CI. 
it is fully open source and is really interesting for us, especially because it has already existing board definitions and it manages U-Boot, Grub and Fastboot out of the box. Uh, but of course, some work is needed to integrate Lava as our real RTM system. All the work is uh, sorry, all the parts where the work is needed is illustrated is, is illustrated by a working penguin. So the RTM farm clients is a new asynchronous microservice that we will integrate in our in our real RTM system. It uses XML RPC and zero MQ to communicate with the Lava Master. And uh, on the other side, it allows a uh, homogeneous communication with the backend using a REST API and a WebSocket. Some refactoring is uh, needed as well on the on our backend, as we can see on the on the bottom of the of the slide to 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 be able to start a real RTM, uh, real test live. And finally, of course, on the top part of the slide, uh, you have a little penguin to say that we need to work to integrate the red pesk boards we want to support in uh, in uh, in our QA environment. And this is what we'll be talking about for the next slide. We'll be talking about how we integrate this world inside our QA system. So when a board is integrated inside the real RTM, it is linked physically to one dispatcher, to one lava dispatcher actually. Uh, this uh, configuration can be seen as a bit overkill, as we said, but it is uh, it allows us actually to be later to be able to run more complex complex tests, needing, for example, to grab an HDMI signal or an audio signal, thing like that. So we need really to have a dispatcher as, as to be the closer as possible to the DOT. Uh, <clears throat> in this part of the architecture, we can see as well that the Lava Master completely controls the Lava Dispatchers through the Zero MQ protocol. Uh, therefore, all the job submissions, the test results, and the test logs are fully managed by Lava, which suits us really, really well, actually. And so, therefore, the communication between the Lava Master and the Lava Dispatcher is not web based business. And this is great for us, really. So we have seen how Lava system integration gives answer to several of our challenges. Let's see now how the other challenges can be uh, resolved. And the first one of these of these challenges is how to control the power supply. We have two, two solutions here. A first easy one, a second more complete but more complex one. The first easy one is simply a remotely controlled multi socket. Uh, this socket, I gave you the reference if you want. This socket is controlled through Ethernet. A binary is available in Linux distribution. It's, it's called EGCTL. It's really simple. It's and on, it's off and on, but it's, it does the job. A second solution more complete is to use a laboratory power supply. I gave you the, the, the reference as well. This one is controlled through RS485, uh, through the Modbus protocol. And it, it is able to simulate low or high voltage uh, situations to test boards in the limits. So this is, this is actually really interesting uh, in some in few cases. And now let's face maybe the hardest couple of challenges we've met for this integration, the red pesk image load in board and the boot on this image. The first option is actually a network boot uh, using PXE. Uh, and inside this solution, two solutions are available for the file system. The first one is NFS, but we will forget this one 
right now because it does not propagate the SE Linux and Mac labels. Since we want Redbesk to be kind of a reference in cybersecurity, it's really a problem for us. So no NFS. The second solution is NVD, Network Block Devices File System. It works quite well, really. It's really fast if you have a good network. Uh, moreover, it's true for it's true for all the 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 network boot actually solution. But you do not need to flash the red pesk image locally on the device on the test, so you do not wear out the memory. But there is one inconvenient: it's it's either slower or faster so you do not have the exact same behavior as in production. So it, it can be a bit of problem to, to get few little, little errors that you do not have in, with a network boot. Another really interesting solution is using Fastboot. Really. Fastboot is coming from Android. Uh, in this case, in this case, the DUT behaves as the USB storage where the image will be flashed. To enter in fast boot, the U-boot uh, mode needs to be stopped. And this is great because it is managed by Lava. And this fast boot solution allows us to integrate three boards out of four. Uh, these boards are Solid, solid Run, uh, Renesas Gen 3, and Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, and this is free out of the board that we want to support for the Red Pesk uh, community. If the fast board is not support, and this is the case for last board, we have we find out another solution that is USB gadget. Um, in this case, USB gadget needs to be enabled in the dispatcher. And of course, the dispatchers need to have USB OTG in a, enabled as well. Uh, in this case, the dispatcher behave as a USB storage. Uh, so basically, the DUT boots on USB in this case. In this case, as so, you, you do not need to flash the board EMMC. So you do not wear, well, wear out the board memory. Uh, but of course, you wear out the dispatcher memory, so it's kind of a trade-off, really. Uh, but another thing that can be great with USB gadget is that it allows us to simulate USB devices like a mouse, a keyboard, and other things that I don't think so, don't think of. Um, so later, for the later test, for more advanced test, we can really use that. And this is how. Uh, USB gadget allows us to integrate the last board, which is the Intel Up board. No, few words on reporting because it can save times uh, to user when a problem appears during a test run. Really, you can save a lot of time with that. So once the integration tests have passed or failed, the reporting needs to be done on the results. Um, you can you can retrieve the boot logs if it's relevant. So more if you want to test the image, uh, you have you really you have to to send the STD out and STD log really basically it's the it's the base to debug, and of course, the test anything protocol file needs to 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 contain uh, sorry needs to be retrieved as well. If the tests are successful, virtual RL, the, the package can go to the next step. That can be a vulnerability scanner, a license analysis, thing like that. And now an example of uh, test reporting in our Redpesk community stack. So we can see really quickly that you have the test, the test anything protocol file in the middle. And you have a quick synthesis uh, that you can see really quick, where you can see really quick the number of tests passed, the number of tests fa failed, and you can download the, the, the tab file and the, and the logs file. 
and that's all for Tesla Portier. So the real real-time implementation is in progress and should be available soon. But in order to go further, we gave us a little roadmap for the next implementation in the QA system. The first point of this uh, roadmap is to be able to, to do more advent tests in, uh, in, the, in the QA system. Uh, by in advanced tests, I mean tests that need more external processes. For example, they need an HD, HDMI grab, an audio grab, and typically this kind of processes need, would need to be run on the dispatcher side. A real, another really interesting point is developers being able to access, to remote access the board uh, through VPN, for example, to do little development tests. Um, and actually, in the Lava ecosystem, it, it already exists and it is uh, it corresponds to the hacking session. Another point really interesting is adding. Adding, uh, sorry, adding test libraries shared between projects uh, and we can go even further like just uh, sharing test plans between uh, between projects and finally a last point is the integration of external module in order to go further in the QA to integrate more and more modules to be able to scan the code for cyber security concern to be able to output a flow chart generator because it's all, always uh, it's always u useful for certification etc etc and um, in order to finish this presentation with style here the conclusion In conclusion, uh, continuous testing is a must-have. Really, it's a must-have because of the increasing code complexity, the long-term support needs for industrial system, and the cybersecurity concern. Both virtual and real boards must be in the continuous integration loop, really, because for a lot of tests, you, for a lot of tests, a virtual target is enough, but when your tests are passing on the virtual target, you really want to be sure that they are passing on the production target. In IoT.bizDash, we give, we give answer for that. The first one is the virtual RTM that are already available in community. And the second one is the real RTM. We are working on it and, it's, and it will be available soon. And finally, a continuous test, uh, sorry, a continuous testing system is a part of a full QA system. And a full QA system is never ending, basically. It has to be able to integrate external modules to be, to be more and more efficient. So this is the end of, the, of this presentation. I thank you a lot for your attention and I'm now ready to answer your question if you have any. Thank you, thank you a lot, have a good day.